Hello, I'm George Kinghorn, founder of Kinghorn Electric Vehicles, and the story I'm about to tell you involves a Nissan Leaf, a classic Morris Minor, and a pretty ambitious idea. It all started in 2019 when I got my first EV, a Nissan Leaf. I loved the way the car drove, but it was pretty fugly. I've since learned to appreciate its unique looks though. So I thought, what if I take the drivetrain of a Nissan Leaf and put them into a classic car? One EV power with classic looks. Best of both worlds, right? What could possibly go wrong? Well, turns out quite a lot. But after a year, many late nights and possibly a few choice words that I can't repeat here, I finally built my first EV converted Morris Minor. Before I knew it, people were asking me to do conversions for them, help them with their Nissan Leaves and fix up their other EVs. I'd been in business since 1997 and prior to this did a decade selling on eBay and coaching others to do the same. But honestly, this was just way more fun. Fast forward four years and we've built seven leaf based conversions, bought and sold over 100 EVs and serviced tons and tons of them. So if you're an enthusiast about EVs just like me and you enjoy classic cars with a modern twist or you just want to see somebody struggling on trying to run an EV workshop with all the headaches that that entails, make sure to like, subscribe and stay tuned for more EV madness in our regular update. <coughs> So let's get our regular update started by telling you what happened in August 2024. Firstly, we had an X Taxi 2018 Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour with 137,000 miles of it on it come in. It wouldn't start a run. We diagnosed it as a resistance issue on the battery. We dropped the battery out and found swollen modules, and some were leaking, caused by multiple rapid charges, is what we finally diagnosed. We changed all the modules for brand new ones, which we have a, a supply of, and rebuilt the car. Um, we liked the car so much that I decided to buy it. It's actually now my car. Um, I'm driving around in it, and it's all ready to do another 137,000 miles. The next vehicle that came in was a 2015 Peugeot Partner EV, one of the very first early ones while they were kind of figuring out how to build them. It kept on coming up with intermittent faults, so we checked through all of the, the cabling and made sure that everything was working as it should do, put it all back together again, and all the faults cleared. It's now back on the road and being used by its owner, who is a guy who does gardening. Yeah, gardening guy. So yeah, it's back out there doing what it should be doing. Over the last two years, we've had a 2022 Kia e Nero on lease. It's been great, good long range car. My wife used it a lot for going up to her parents in, in Glasgow. Anyway, the lease came up to the end and we said goodbye to it. So we made sure it was nice and clean. There wasn't any bodywork marks and it went back to the lease company without any issues. The next challenge was a 2016 Volvo hybrid that wouldn't start a run and was showing all kinds of faults. Anyway, after a lot of work, we diagnosed it to be in the inverter that needed changing. Volvo wanted over 7,000 pounds to do the job. We sourced to use one from Holland, recorded it to the car and fitted it. And I think the total job came to less than £2,000. It now starts and drives and the owner is driving around in it at the moment. Um, it needs a couple of little other jobs doing to it, so we'll get them done in the next few weeks. Did I mention we're converting a 1968 Jaguar S-Type to electric and one of the starting points on this journey was to test the battery pack. It was supplied to us out of the car. So we had to use an external testing rig to make sure that the battery was all okay before we stripped it down. It all checked out great and it's now ready to be all the modules to come out of the battery to then go into new battery boxes, get rewired and then put into the Jaguar. So that's the first challenge on the Jag. Next into the workshop was an Ionic that's been used as a taxi. It paid us a visit for a transmission fluid change and Chris the owner left us a lovely review on Google. Cheers Chris, thanks for the review. The taxi leaf that we replaced the batteries on needed its suspension refreshing. Not really a surprise after 137,000 miles. So we replaced the struts, the lower control arms and the drop links. One of the other conversions that we've got in at the moment, or we did have in at the moment, at, at the time, um, was a Reliant scimitar that we were converting to electric. So we were nearing the end of the EV conversion of the scimitar. More details on this scimitar will be available on the website and in videos on the YouTube channel quite soon. One of the last jobs to do on the scimitar was to fit the, and plumb the power steering. We fitted an electric hydraulic power steering pump. 
um, which then works the existing steering rack through its its pipes. But it needed um, custom made hydraulic hoses to get from the pump to the rack. And we got those made by our friends with Pertec. The lovely car company sent us an early leaf all the way up from Yorkshire. It needed the high voltage heater replaced and an electric handbrake actuator sourcing and fitting. A new Nissan supplied actuator was about 1500 quid, I think it was more than 1500 quid, and we found a used one for 350. So we fitted the heater, a new one, sorted all that out, got it nice and warm for the winter, and got the used actuator, made sure it was working okay, and get that, got that fitted. It's now being sent back down to the guys at the lovely car company, and they'll be finding a new owner for it soon. Next up was an ENV 200 that came in for tyres and brakes. Simple job once you've done it quite a few times and a bit easier than doing it on a Nissan Leaf because the Leaf's handbrake cables are connected underneath the rear seat. We then got the Simitas wheel spinning for the first time which is a wonderful moment on all the conversions. You know they're near the end and the customer's just going to be dead happy once to see the video of the wheel spinning. I went to look at a Mazda with a view to potentially converting it to electric. We're working on a proposal now on that and the owner of the Mazda also bought an, a used MG5 estate office. So all good in that relationship. We got offered a used Nissan Leaf, which had not been serviced for years and looked a bit sorry for itself. I went to see it on the day that I went away to Bike Park Wales to throw myself down yet another mountain with my family. The things that you do for fun, eh? It's quite strange, really. When I returned, we got the Scimitar finished and drove it for the first time. It doesn't have the brakes connected as it's off to get a full restoration and the body needs to be taken off. So we used the handbrake as we were driving it around. It drove so smoothly and it was lovely to drive it out of the workshop and round the yard for the first time. Can't wait to get it back after its restoration, do the final bits of setup and then give it a really nice run out on the road. Again, subscribe if you want to see that when it comes back. Mind, it could be a while because it's getting a proper, proper um, restoration done to it. Then after being with us for such a long time, it was collected by its owner. It's always like having one of the kids leave home when they go. They've been with us for quite a while, we've been doing little things to them, it all comes together in the end and then it's kind of a rush to push it gently out of the door. We rounded the month off by fully refurbishing the leaf that I'd bought just before going to Bike Park Wales and putting it up for sale. It was only listed for four days and then I went off to Glasgow with its new owner. We'd given it a full machine polish and done all of the brakes and all of the servicing and everything on it and made it a, a mighty fine car once again. We'll be doing regular updates on what's going on so if you'd like to know more, please subscribe to the channel. And whilst you're doing that, drop us a like if you can. That's what all of the cool kids say, apparently. And share the video with your friends if you can, if you think that they'd like to see what actually goes on in the madness of this EV repair shop. So thank you for staying to the end. See you soon and enjoy yourself.